Hey guys, Kronos here, and welcome to the first of what is hopefully an informative group of videos about uh, PSO2. So, I have been currently playing this game for, let's say, about two months now, pretty heavily on my live stream, and I tend to like to research a lot of what I'm doing when I play a game. One thing I found a lot about this game specifically is the community is pretty cool about providing information, everyone's really, really nice, but a lot of the basic functions of the game itself aren't really explaining any content from content creators on YouTube that I've seen. At least not in a way that I've felt is easily attainable or easily viewable. Basically, I've had to jump through hoops to get some information where I feel like it should be pretty easy to get. And, um... Yeah, I thought about this whole process of making a couple of videos of essentially my experiences in PSO2 and kind of what I've learned along the way to hopefully help you guys not make the same mistakes I did first off, but provide some information that I feel like should be relatively easily attainable to everyone. Now, this game is currently only released in Japan. It's a JP game. I am playing it via the tweaker, which anyone who's been, been playing PSO2, um, awesome guys over at arcs-layer.com, which I'm going to provide a link to that area, or to that website, in the description underneath the video itself. They're working, or they have been working, and continue to work on a, um, a program that you can use to both download, install, update, and patch the game for English translations that they personally work on which has been really, really cool. I played this game about a year or two ago, back when it was, like, I think, episode two, roughly at the time. Maybe, like, early episode three. And they were working on patches back then. We're now at episode four, and the patches have been amazing. But, I digress. I want to go ahead and continue on with what we're looking at here. So, right now, we're at the character select screen. Not too much going on. I wanted to start from the very beginning. So, you just loaded up the game for the first time. You're about to create your character, and you're kind of trying to figure out, you know, what should you be doing? Or, I think the one question I always, I get while I'm live streaming, or I, you know, I find myself asking, or I found myself asking a lot of early on when I was playing was, what should I really be doing? So that's what we're going to kind of address here in the first video. This is my main character that I play while I'm streaming, usually. Um, the character that I had been playing for the longest time is Chrono Edge. He's currently a bouncer. But his multiple other character, other classes leveled as well. Um, you can see I've had quite a bit of time on him, quite a bit of playtime. Some of it AFK, but I put in quite a bit of work on this character, and he's been a lot of fun to play. The current level cap, as of right now, now being April 6, 2017, um, is 80, and uh, there are some things to go through to be able to pass the level cap of 75 to get to 80. We'll cover that in another video. We're going to go with a new character, because that's what you guys are going to be starting. I'm going to skip the cutscene. You guys are more than welcome to watch it, since it'll be your first character. But let's go ahead and get over to uh, the character selection screen, or the character creation screen. Now, you've got... <laughs> this is actually one of the first things you really want to look into, and I'll... I'll uh, I'll admit, something I haven't looked into extensively personally, um, I just kind of got an idea of what I wanted to do and I jumped into it immediately. So race selection, what does it really matter? Like how is that going to affect my character? First off, you've got the male-female variant. Obviously there's going to be different fashion that's involved in male and female. Fashion's kind of like the most important end game to any game ever and anyone tells you otherwise is just lying to you, no, I'm just joking. But fashion's a pretty big part of uh, PSO2 community. The outfits are pretty cool, so decide what you want to, what you want to play, guy, girl, you know, whatever. Changing your character's gender is not something that I know that you can do. Granted, if you can do that, um, I'm sure you guys are gonna let me know in the comments. Um, but to my knowledge, you cannot. And making changes afterwards does require either a a uh, makeover pass or 500 AC. AC being a currency that it's or it's called Arcs Cash. It's a currency that's used, kind of like the real money sort of transaction, I guess, um, for the game itself. So, the difference in races. From what I've been able to follow, let's see here. So, humans, jack of all trades, master of none, they're just bland. They have you know, baseline across the board. 
Male and female have slight differences. You can kind of look into more of those on the wiki itself, which I'm also going to put top that the words are difficult. I'm going to toss that into the description as well. Um, Newmans. Supposed to be really good as force classes, um, so I'd imagine their tech attack is a little bit higher. Um, very frail, so their standard defenses are probably lower. Casts. Big strength, I believe, is their HP pool and their ranged attack. It's supposed to be the highest, from what I remember at least. I do know there are slight differences in the male and female. Again, that will be in the... Uh, you'll be able to find that in the wiki itself. Doomans are supposed to have the highest... Um, the highest offensive stats with the lowest defensive stats. What that accumulates to is different between male and female. Again, something you can find out in the uh, wiki. I would recommend checking all this out before creating your character itself. Again, I don't think you can change your race or gender after creating your character. So it might be something to look into. We're going to be creating a cast male in honor of my original Fantasy Star Universe character from my Xbox 360 days. Now, character creation usually takes a long time. We're not going to make you sit through all that. It takes for freaking ever. There are sliders all over the place. Um, the meme with this game when it comes to character creation is uh, boobs and butt slider. It exists all over the place for uh, female characters. We're going to go with a male... Hmm. Actually thinking. I know I want my character to be a gunner hunter moving forward. Uh, hunter being the subclass, gunner being the main class. And that's again something else we'll kind of go into as far as you know, main classes and subclasses. Um, so I think I'm going to start him out as a hunter to get the preliminary levels in it. This is just kind of your base. Uh, you can make edits or adjustments to it. Honestly, it doesn't really matter too much. It's not going to make much of a difference in what your character ends up at the end of the day. I'm just going to choose this. Here's some information about character creation, kind of about how it works out. Again, the guys over at Arc Slayers have been really awesome in translating this. When I first created my character, this wasn't even translated, so I had no idea what this actually said. Um, in the effort of saving everyone a bunch of time and me a bunch of editing, I actually have a character created and ready to load in. This is the character I'm going to go with. Anyone who knows my character creations or character composition knows that black, red, and white are my favorite character colors. It's usually what I tend to go with for the most part. So here is our cast. Doesn't look the best. These aren't the parts he's going to be sticking with, so these are just the parts he has for right now. We're going to just name him Kronos, just straight up Kronos. It's the name of my original cast, it's the name of this cast. And, uh, yeah, let's see if we can go ahead and get in. Kronos, cast, hunter, and we should be all set to go. So, once you have completed the story and prologue, you can skip the introduction and start episode 4. If you select yes, you will skip the introduction. Skip the introduction to episode 4. So... In the effort of just talking about a couple game mechanics, I'm not going to skip this introduction because it's going to bring up game mechanics we're going to want to talk about anyway. So we're going to select no. Now this tutorial used to not be translated, so a lot of things are translated now. And that's going to be really, really helpful for us. Again, we're skipping cutscenes. You enjoy them. Storyline's pretty cool for this game. And it's also very long, too. So before we get started, I don't play mouse and keyboard. I actually play controller. You can play either or and be successful. I've been very successful with the controller, so that's what I'm going to continue to use. Um, we're, oh, so you're also going to see messages pop up from my team. That's just the team I'm a part of at the moment. Um, <laughs> what's up, guys? If you're watching this video, you're a part of it, so deal. Um, so we're going to view the tutorial. The cool thing is, is the tutorial is actually tailored to whatever your control scheme is set to. And mine is set to, to controller or gamepad, so it's actually going to show those specific... Uh, the specific instructions. If you play mouse and keyboard, you'll probably get the WASD keys and things of that sort. 
moving your mouse around. This is all very basic stuff, so I'm pretty much going to talk over most of it and skip a lot of it. You're going to want to keep an eye on what the controls are, guys. <laughs> that way you're able to kind of move forward. Now, I'm assuming you have basic knowledge of MMOs in general, and this is going to sound really weird when I say this, take all the knowledge of past MMOs and completely throw them out. What you're seeing above the screen right now is actually an emergency broadcast um, for an emergency quest or an EQ. It's a, um, a type of quest kind of similar to like a world boss and other MMOs would be. Essentially, it's broadcast to the entire server at the top of the hour after... Uh, they usually set these out 15 minutes beforehand, but at the top of the hour, you end up um, going... or they start up an emergency quest. There are different blocks that uh, are set for different levels of, con or, uh, of gameplay based on the level of your character. And people group up and do these emergency quests. They all have different objectives. They have different rarities of items that can drop and things of that sort. But I wouldn't worry too much about that. We're going to cover EQs more in depth in another video as well. This is just getting started. So a couple things to note really here. Um, some things are going to end up not being translated. That happens with the uh, translation patch. If you can read Japanese, you're going to be at an advantage. So one thing you're noticing as well is that small circle that's closing in on my character when I attack. If I were just to spam my attack button, you see the circle itself doesn't come up. But if I time my attack to be right when that circle turns red and closes in on my character, that performs what's called a just attack. Just attacks, um are timed attacks, and there are certain mechanics for classes where just attacks actually, well, baseline just attacks increase damage when you do them or perform them, but there's certain mechanics for certain classes where just attacks will actually increase your, uh, increase your damage even more, and save on what's called PP. You'll see that in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. PP is essentially your photon points. It's your mana, so to speak. It's used for um, performing any of your basic skills, so... This gigantic photon laser sword that I'm just doing here, that uses PP. This crazy spin attack also uses PP. And they actually can be chained together. As long as you have enough PP to chain them together. But they can be chained together into uh, combination attacks. And you can use them kind of however you'd like, really. You're actually trying to a combination attack and failing horribly. And you see I kind of put the two of them together and even waited for the just attack. Again, it increases the damage of the photon art. So now they're teaching you about dodging. Dodging does have a bit of iframes that are involved with it. They're very short iframes, unskilled. Now this is always based on what class you start out as. Since I started as a hunter, we have guards. So it's asking me to guard, which I have multiple times, but I'm not sure what it's waiting for. I guess I have to guard a specific enemy, but the enemy hasn't spawned yet. Let's see if we can get him to spawn. There are lots of little nuances and different things about your class that you'll learn. This is all just very, very basic. I'm sure anyone who's been looking for some guidance as far as this game goes, probably going to skip over this video for the most part. I'm still not sure why this is not spawning the enemy for me. It's actually going to be a little bit of a waste if I can't get him to spawn. That's going to be a shame. Weapon action guard. So how long do you want me to keep my guard up? Did I kill the guy that we're supposed to guard against? Hmm. I actually might have to... Oh, there it goes. Okay. So while holding left trigger, you can swap your action palettes. Now, this is actually about palette swapping. So... My current control layout is set in a way where palette swapping is a thing. So if you actually go to controller settings, this is primary input type. So I have gamepad set. I'm not going to change it again. And then action type. You have two options. You have the three button type and you have the two button type. 
Two button type basically has a, a dedicated button for always having your basic attacks, a dedicated button for always having your gear attacks, um, which for Hunter is block. And then you get to pick three PAs, and those three PAs will always be locked to your PA button, so to speak, which in my case is Y. Now, that's for two button layouts. What I use, and what I think technically is better for controller players, is a three button layout. What happens is you actually end up getting, and I can't show it to you right this very moment, but you actually get up, end up getting three buttons, in this case X, Y, and right bumper, that you can set to whatever buttons you want. They can be basic attack, they can be PAs, and they can all just be whatever you want them to be. And with that specific setup, you're able to chain PAs together however you'd like. And since you're playing on controller, I think that's very important to be able to do. Now this is an emergency code. These pop up and they have objectives. Just complete whatever objective it says to do. In this case, underneath the map, it's said to defeat two enemies. We just defeated them and we're all set. Now it's going to teach us about changing our pallets. Again, very basic stuff. It just lets you swap weapons. Hunters have multiple different weapons you can use. Uh, a total of four. Every class can use a gun slash. You're always going to get one. And they have sword, which is basically a great sword. Wire lances, which... I mean, I like to call them like basically kunai with chain. They're like knives on wires. They're pretty cool. Um, and they also get spears, or partisans, as people like to call them. We'll kind of cover weapons again a little bit later on. Right now, we're just kind of just going over a couple basic things of what you're going to see. But this is just specific to Hunter. If you pick a different class, you're going to get a whole different setup. Again, we're skipping cutscenes. So that was the basic tutorial, telling us how to play the game, what to do, so on and so forth. Now this is the first mission. Let's go ahead and take down these guys here really quick. Again, it was an emergency code. It was to defeat four of the Dagon. And they're kind of like the resident evil aliens, essentially. Without trying to give too much away. I kind of wish I would have edited my sunglasses a little bit more, but I didn't. And so this is chapter zero of episode one. This is kind of story related. Again, I'm going to skip most of this. I really only wanted to deal with the, um, the opening tutorial to kind of give us some time to, uh, to go over a couple basic features of the game itself. No, funny enough, they didn't teach you about locking on. Now, locking on is going to vary depending upon your uh, your class. Also, um, wow. Okay, so I haven't been taught about weapons yet. I just got two seven-star drops from a basic quest. I don't know how common that is. I feel like it's not very. And we also got two PAA drops. Skills in this game? Or another thing we have to go over, <laughs> and something I'll go over in just a quick second here as soon as we finish killing these guys. They're talking about a photon blast. It's a specialized technique that you're going to get later on um, that's based off your mag. Again, something we cover in another episode. So, you know, that's weird. Things they didn't cover at all in the, uh, in the opening. Locking on, which everyone will have a lock on button for this playing on controller. Uh, for me, it's my left bumper. Let's me lock on to enemies. Um, the discs you guys saw at the uh, at the end of killing those last mobs, those are called PAs or photon arts. Photon arts are the specialized skills that you guys see here that I was using earlier. And the way you learn new ones is by drops from enemies. They drop PA discs. And those discs you then use, they have specific levels to them, and uh, yeah, the higher the level, the better the disc. 99.9% .9 of the time. There are certain discs we want a lower level, but those are very unique situations we're probably not going to go into for a very long time. Okay. So we're roughly 20-ish minutes in. We finished our first mission. We finished uh, kind of the uh, 
the tutorial so to speak, and you are ready to walk out onto the Ark ship for the first time. Here's where things tend to get a little bit out of hand for most people. They're not sure where to go, and they're not sure what's important, what to skip, how they can really like move forward with their character in a way that's going to make sense. I recommend you take a look at this, it kind of shows off the Ark ship to you, you get to see a lot of different things the different counters and things like that. I'm going to skip it because it's storyline related. That also says present. That's going to make more when you pay attention to the story. I'm sorry, make more sense when you pay attention to the story. So before we jump three years into the past of what was going on, now we're back in the present is more or less what we're looking at here. So we're going to ignore that. That's the storyboard for episode 4. And now we've kind of completed the beginning. So now we're out of the first story mission. We've, cre we've created our character. We kind of know some of the basic controls, kind of what to expect. And we have a couple things here. They actually dropped two weapons for me right off the bat, which is kind of cool. So there's a couple things I want to show you guys. Um, some things that I found that were really, really useful for me when I was first starting out that I didn't have set up gonna hop into the settings and we're gonna take a look at a few things so basic settings your lock on type so lock on using where it sticks so when you lock onto an enemy you can switch by using the right stick or you can switch um, if you're I'm sorry if you're on control you can switch by using the right stick sometimes this is great sometimes this is annoying I personally have it turned on and I just remember not to flick my right stick left and right whenever I'm locked onto an enemy because my camera's focused on the enemy itself if you can't do that without forgetting, you don't need to have, you know, you don't need to do that. You can always turn off switch um, or switch lock on by using right stick. What it does is it just keeps you locked onto the same target no matter what you do with your camera at all. And your camera just won't turn and you won't switch lock ons. Palette change settings. Hold and click. So right now when I change palette, I have to select the change of my palette. If I don't select it afterwards by hitting the B button, which is the select button for uh, for controller, which is very backwards and it's very comp or, uh, it's really difficult to get used to if you're used to console gaming, where A is the select option. Um, it's a little bit weird to get used to, but right now that's what it's set to, and it's held open no matter what. It's here, it stays open. I just keep going through it, right? So if I swap that option, again, a very basic setting. Palette change, click. Let's go ahead and save. My palette will swap no matter what. If I have it set to something, it'll go to it automatically. So that's kind of cool. Honestly, I haven't really noticed a different from a difference of it much on my end here. That's not really too important for settings as far as it goes. There's just a couple things that I would look at here. So. One thing that I would automatically turn on no matter what, this is going to be for much later in the game itself, but immediately collect 13 items of rarity 13 star or higher. 13 star is currently the highest star of every type of weapon. There are some 14 star weapons. Those are super, super rare. Um, those are some of the best types of weapons in the game. So, I mean, it's not going to make much sense right now, but go ahead and just have this ticked on. You don't want to have set do nothing or uh, don't use anything. And this is going to be personal preference based. Um, right now, by default, it sets the rare item drop notification setting to 7 or above. I'd recommend setting it to, to 10 or above. That's really what's more important. 13 star or above, I mean, you'll get a notification for a 13 star anyway. It's going to look different. I would say 10. That's just me, and that's my preferences. You can always change it for yourself. Outside of that, really, there's nothing too much you really need to do in settings. It's all personal preference based of what you actually want. After you go into your controller settings, really, that's kind of the real, like, meat and potatoes, so to speak, of your settings, of what's going to be important and what's going to be different for everybody. Since I play on controller, first, on my basic settings, by default, yours is probably set to numeric, I'm sorry, keyboard, um, if you're using keyboard and mouse. If you're using controller like I am, you can swap yours up to alphabetical, it'll give you either Xbox controls or PS4 controls. So either or works fine but have those set to what you're looking for. Of course, you want to set your primary input method. We went over that earlier. And the action types. Again, went over it earlier. 
But now I can actually show you guys what the difference is in those action types and what you get. So right now my action types are set to three button layout. So this is what you'll see whenever you go into your start menu, equip weapons. And you get three buttons here. I'm actually going to go ahead and purposely remove these here. And then equip, let me see. Move, remove, move, remove. So by default, your stuff is going to be set to two button layout. If you switch to three button layout and you equip something, this is what you'll see. You'll see act one, two, and three, which stands for action, four, five, and six. So one, two, and three are going to be your X, Y, and right bumper. Four, five, and six are going to be when you have your left trigger pressed down, your X, Y, and right bumper. I always have my X set to normal attacks, my Y set to APA of some form, and then my weapon action set to my right bumper. Just because it's what I'm used to, it's what I personally favor, you can have it set to whatever you'd like. And then you also have the option of setting three more PAs later on. Again, this is all personal preference, this is all settings based. Don't harp on it too long right this very moment. You're probably going to find a better way of setting it up for yourselves. Um, if it's too complicated or you feel like that's not really working out for you, you can always change your controller settings to a two button layout. And what the two button layout does for action, I'm going to go ahead and save it. It's going to mess me up a little bit, but that's fine. What it does is it has a base action always set. You can't ever change it. And then you get to pick three photon arts. What will happen is, depending upon where you are in your combo, is what photon art you will use. So if I were to just press my Y button, it would use this first photon art, say over end. I'm going to go ahead and have this on Guilty Break really quick here. And then I'm going to switch this over to Twister Fall. So now, say I swing my weapon once with X. I press X one time, I do a normal attack, and then I press Y. What I'll get, instead of over end, is Guilty Break. So it'll use the Guilty Break PA. If I swing my butt, my attack twice, I mean, obviously by now it starts to make sense. You swing your weapon twice, you end up getting twist or fall. You swing it a third time, it goes back to overend. So on and so forth, all the way around. So this is a little bit of a simpler way of doing this. Some people prefer it. Um, mostly I find a lot of people that are on keyboard and mouse prefer it. Because they can easily swap between weapons very, very fast. We got this weapon drop in this mission. Honestly, I'm surprised they gave us a 7-star weapon right from the get-go, which is pretty crazy. Um, but it's besides the point. So that's kind of the weapon layouts and the controller layouts of how you can have things set up that work well for you. I would play around with it a little bit, get set up with what you would prefer. I prefer the 3-button layout because it works best for me. Let's set up my own combos. And reminds me most of a... Uh, of a like an old school, not an old school, but kind of like Devil May Cry-esque combat, and I enjoy that quite a bit. So let's kind of move past the whole controller settings and basic things of what we should be doing and kind of get into a little bit of what we should see. Actually, you know what? We've kind of gone into a lot, and it's been about half an hour on this video itself. I think I'm going to put that in video number two of... Hmm. I haven't even thought of a... Uh a name for the series just yet. Name is to be dis uh, to be determined, but I digress, guys. Thanks so much for stopping by. Um, do leave feedback in the comments of stuff that you guys would like to uh, look into, things you'd like to know more about. Um, everyone's a new player at some point. Everyone has questions, and I get questions every single day in my live stream. I do stream every single day um, at about 7.30 p.m. EST over on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash chronocatastrophe. Probably going to toss the link for that also in the description of the video itself. If you guys ever have questions, if you ever guys want to hang out, do some missions, you know, have a good time. You're more than welcome to stop by the stream, hang out, talk, talk junk like half of my stream usually does. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, let me know if there's something for the video you guys want to see and uh, we will tackle it when we do or when we see it. Anyway, guys, this is uh, Kronos signing off.